Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a peacock, and I think we're going to try to throw in a feather or two tonight, too, depending on how much time we have. Yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm going to show you step by step how to do it from start to finish. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's been in chat tonight, so if you've got questions, you can ask those in chat, and we'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I pulled out my feathers that I have here in the studio all the time. I think what we're going to try to do is kind of tuck them in, not the real feathers, but obviously we're going to try to paint it and we'll have our peacock here. I didn't want to have to try to paint all of the feathers. You kind of need a really big canvas to get it just right with a peacock. I've tried, I tried painting an entire peacock, um, a white peacock. That There's a tutorial for it. And the head was like, I mean, it was so tiny. <laughs> so like, in order to get all the feathers in, the body of it has to be super small. So we're going to go with an 11 by 14 inch canvas board today. Uh, this is a watercolor canvas board from Fredericks. Uh, I haven't done anything to it. Um, I was thinking about maybe priming it but I really couldn't pick a color so we're just going to go with white and uh, we'll paint around our subject and kind of try to fill it in later. I'm going to go over colors. <clears throat> Carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna. This one is called raw sienna. Um, if you don't have it just use yellow oxide instead. Yellow oxide here. Um, Indian yellow hue, cadmium yellow light. This one is green gold. Um, also mixable color here. The, if you don't have it, you can mix it with yellow and some green. Um, this one is thalo green yellow shade. Oh, unbleached. I'm sorry. Uh, thalo, thalo green yellow shade. Thalo turquoise. Thalo blue green shade. Ultramarine blue. Quinacridone magenta over here. And then this one is doxazine purple. I'm getting my colors all mixed up. I've moved them around <laughs> where I normally added a couple new ones. Uh, this one is unbleached titanium, titanium white, and gloss glazing liquid. All right, let's, uh, let me just grab a piece of chalk here. Um, as far as brushes go, I'll mention them as I go, but I'm going to use probably a large filbert for the background. So I've got a uh, eight filbert for that. This is These are um, Princeton brushes that I'm using as usual. And then for the feathers, you're going to want some sort of a, that's why I like to use these filberts. You're going to want kind of a small and medium sized filbert for some of the feathers, especially around the head. They're really small little feathers. And then maybe a round brush to do some of the smaller details. I also grabbed my angle brushes just to have them. And then for the feathers, you're going to, the larger feathers, you're going to want um, a nice round or a liner brush. This one's a two script liner. So I'll mention them again, like I said, if I use them, um, but um, this one is, let me see. Let me just mention the, the brands in case you want to know. This is the Summit 6100 series. This one is the Velvet Touch. So when you see the red, you know that the Velvet Touch. And then this one is the Dakota um, in the two filbert. So this one's just like kind of a, um, a harder um, bristled brush, a little bit firmer um, control. And so I think that might work for our feathers. All right, so let's get down to drawing here. I'm just going to use chalk. And um, the body of the peacock is going to fill up most of the canvas. And I decided to go ahead and kind of have it going off here so I don't have to worry about the feet. Um, plus, it's not really, they're not really featured in the, in the actual um, picture here. They're real blurry, so you can't really tell what, where they're at anyways. The head's going to come up right here, so there's going to be kind of this... Um, area here and then the next going to kind of bisect this large circle so the circle is covering um, probably from the what is this probably the quarter quarter mark all the way down and just past halfway over here on this side almost to the third on this side okay so then the neck is going to come back pretty good angle it's pretty narrow and then there's a little bit of these feathers back here showing but they are very indistinct so we're not going to do a ton of detail on any of these and, but the head is where all the 
detail is. I'm going to bring the crown up a little bit, I think, like in here, and then the head will be right here. Nice big beak, and then that, the forehead comes into the beak a little bit. The beak goes into the forehead, I should say, a little bit right here. And goes back. Little head, very similar to a swan, their shape. So somewhere in like that, I think I've got it a little bit too round in here. So I'll probably narrow it down a little bit as I paint it, but somewhere in like that. And then Make it a little bit smaller right here. And the eyes right in here. Going at a diagonal line there. Yeah, just gonna bring that down just a little bit. Okay, so kind of in there, that's kind of our head. There's a lot of lines and things happening, but We'll fix it when we paint it. And then the feathers I want to kind of, kind of like they're tucked in here. So we'll have them kind of coming around here. I tried to curve mine as best I could to take a photo, but I didn't want to bend them too much. Some of them wanted to be bending the opposite way. So one here and then one coming out here. So that'll be our, our eyes and we'll have nuts, lots of nice frills coming around. So that's the idea there. If you wanted to, I was thinking about like I might, if I had more time, maybe even put some flowers down here, but I don't think I'm going to tonight. I don't, I think this will give us plenty to do tonight in our two hour window of opportunity that we've got. All right. So let's go ahead and do the background. I think I'm going to just kind of keep it a, keep it a gray. The gray kind of looks pretty nice with the background. Um, maybe go a little bit, um, a little bit brown with it. So I'm going to go a little bit more old, unbleached, um, burnt umber and ultramarine blue, and then maybe get some of the, um, yellow oxide and add that. I'll see how that looks. Yeah. So that's kind of a interesting kind of gray yeah, that's really pretty, and I think that that'll be a nice backdrop. It's Whenever you're, like, trying to pick a color for your background and you're not really sure, just pick some colors that are sort of neutral. Neutrals are great for, especially if you've got an, a really colorful um, object like this. You don't want anything competing with the colors in the... the um, uh, peacock. I almost said parakeet. <laughs> peacock. <laughs> what are we painting? <laughs> um, yeah, because, you know, there's so much vibrant color in them, you want the colors to really shine. And so if you paint your background really vibrant too, it's going to compete for attention. So we're just painting it with neutrals that we've created through the colors that we're going to be using in our bird. Um, and that's a really easy way of, you know, just make a gray, mix a couple colors that are opposite on the color wheel and, um, or, you know, grab a brown or a yellow and add some, you know, another interesting color to it. Uh, like another option would have been like purple with my yellow would have made, um, uh, like a yellow oxide with purple would have made it. Well, let's go ahead and see what it makes right here. We'll just do a little bit. See, it's going to make kind of a warmer, warmer gray brown here. And depending on how much purple I use, you know, it'll go more towards the pink side. We'll just add some of that in there too. Why not? So, and I'm not worried about my, my drawing of my feathers. I just kind of wanted to put them in for size reference to get an idea if I made my bird big enough. So I think it's going to work just fine. A little bit of burnt umber. And you can mix up a lot of this color if you want. Like, you know, if you want a, a ton, I'm going to mix all four of those colors together. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to bring the head down, the sides down, down a little bit. Okay. 
just paint that in. So if I wanted to, I could probably have painted like the background. I was thinking the yellow oxide would have worked. And so that probably would be a, a good choice if you want to start with a color. And then you could put this over the top of that and it peek through in places too. I just didn't have time before the video. I was taking pictures of my reference <laughs> photo feathers and trying to add them to our image here. I was, I don't know why I forgot that I had those feathers in my studio. They kind of sit off to the side where I don't really see them much. And uh, so I'm like searching through the internet trying to find pictures of feathers turning the way I wanted them to turn. I'm like, dark. <laughs> I can do that myself. <laughs> uh, so. Oh, well. I'm going to I'm going to spray this with water just to kind of just a tiny bit. It'll kind of help open up the fibers of the canvas. It's kind of dry and sticking and I'm using a lot of paint here to cover, which having a little bit of water down will help with that. Help the paint move a little faster, easier, soak in a little bit better. All right. So just again, just kind of I actually really like that color. Really pretty almost mauve there if you add a left purple to it. And I'm going to add brown to kind of tone it down. But that reddish color, that kind of reddish orangey color will look nice against that blue too because it's sort of opposite on the color wheel. Orange and blue. I mean, so it's not quite orange, but you get that kind of a hint of it. Here with this color, it's gonna be really pretty. Have a nice different tones in here. Also green and red being opposite on the color wheel. We're gonna be doing a lot of green over this. So all these colors are gonna work really nicely. And the bird body's gonna go down there, so I'm not gonna bother with that. I'm gonna get some more white, maybe do a little bit more of like a lighter color in this corner. And you can see that I kind of started in one corner and worked my way around. I'm not gonna try to mix into anything over here right now because it's obviously drying and it's gonna get sticky. So just kind of let that alone. That looks really good. I like those colors a lot. Very pretty. Okay, just touching up any place where I see like some obvious spots that the paint didn't quite catch. All right, I think that'll be good. We may have to give it a second coat here and there, but I think we'll be good enough. And then let's go ahead and put in some color on our bird and kind of place that in. So I'm going to start out with the thalo blue. That's going to be our main color for this bird. Um, so. And I'm kind of brushing sort of, you see how I'm letting that line be kind of soft and blurry because like, like it is in the photo. So just kind of softly brushing over it so that it's kind of slightly blurred. That's what I'm wanting right there. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and get a little bit more. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of ultramarine blue on this side, maybe. A little bit of water. This is heavy body acrylic, so they can tend to be a little bit sticky, a little bit thick. Or a lot thick. Again, kind of going loosely over that edge. That brown is kind of wet still, so it's going to make a nice soft blurry edge for me. Do not want a hard edge there. is in soft focus and the bird's head is going to be the 
more in focus. Star of the show. Okay. Something like that. We get some blue, maybe a little bit of purple. This is the ultramarine blue and a little bit of purple. Kind of just drawing here. did not clean out my brush so it's got a little bit of that brown from the background that's okay it's not bothering anything yeah I think that'll be good hopefully I made it big enough I might I need to bring that body up a little bit and make it a little bit bigger overall no, I think I have it about right okay I'm guessing my drawing here. Uh, I'm gonna get some turquoise. If you don't have this turquoise color, just use thalo blue and thalo green, or just thalo blue and yellow um, will work too. Thalo green is just basically thalo blue with with yellow in it. And I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to it to make it more green. There we go. could use cobalt teal too. I almost grabbed that color, but I decided to just use the turquoise instead. Turquoise and white. Fill that in. And honestly, this is just about all we're going to do with this body part here. It's all pretty blurry in our picture, so we don't need, really need to have a ton of detail in here. I'm going to add a little bit of thalo blue to it in the transition between the two colors so that it blends out nicely. Just a little bit of it peeking through over here. So it's kind of splits about halfway at a, sort of at an angle there, the color shift, and then it shifts to brown up here in this green gold color. I'm gonna grab some of that green gold. I got I put out some fluid green gold because this my green gold this is you can see is kind of drying out. I think the cap was broken and sort of let some air in and dried it out a little bit. I'm gonna get some white here. Ooh, look how pretty that is with some white. This is one of those colors that I don't use that often, but when you need it, it's really handy to have because it it's just it's great. It's in a lot of birds, so if you like to paint a lot of birds, it'd be a good color to grab. Some parrots and things. I just painted a macaw that had it in the wings. Okay, and I'm just going to do it all the way up here. I'm not worried about going over the top of my previous layers here. In fact, where they meet, I'm kind of deliberately brushing this over the top so it kind of blends a little bit. Okay. And then let's get some burnt umber. And I'm just going to mix that with this color. You'll find that a lot of times these colors in these birds, at least I've found that when you have, you know, a certain set of colors in the bird that you'll find it in multiple areas and even the colors that are kind of neutral or browns will be a mixture of the colors that are in other places. The brighter colors will be, you know, a mixture. The, 
the brighter colors won't be a mixture, but the neutrals will be a mixture of the brighter colors, if that makes sense. So it's like they have these, it's almost like they, their bodies have this certain, certain colors that they can make and they mix together and show up in other places. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know how that works, but grabbing some yellow oxide here. Maybe add some Indian yellow hue. I'm seeing some kind of reddish, maybe even some burnt umber. Burnt sand, I mean. Right here. And then I'm gonna kinda do that soft feathery brush stroke there, get a little bit more of the white back in here. I'm going to go a little bit darker than I need to because there's all these dark spots in here, so I get my burnt umber and I'm going to put that in and then I'll go back over it with my lighter color to add the feathers over the top of this area, but I added a little bit of darker purple here too when I was talking. Sorry. I just realized that I didn't mention that color that I was using. Burnt umber here. I've also kind of, as I'm putting in these feathers and things, I'm kind of paying attention to the direction that I'm seeing the feathers growing. And so in the picture, trying to kind of use the brush in that, in that direction so that if I do have parts of it that are going to be showing, which, you know, a lot of this is probably going to be showing through, um, I'm going to get a little bit of purple in the burnt umber here use that on this part of the bird here, back here, um, that it'll look like we meant to do it. It'll just be part of the thing. So that's beak here, beak coming out. Just want to make sure, I feel like the head needs to be up here, so I'm not sure if I need to move the whole body up or what. I just feel like it's a little bit small. So kind of going messy. It's kind of blurring out that line there deliberately. Get a little bit more water. I'm gonna spray my paint, that'll help keep them wet while I'm working. Getting that green gold with mixed with the brown that I did over here. And so that where these two meet, I can kind of use that color. And again, seeing the feathers kind of do this curve right here. So I'm going to pull my brush in that direction. So I'm getting those brush strokes and then get the green gold and kind of come back in the opposite direction. Fill that in. Try to blend that out a little bit. Okay. to the green gold. Add some yellow back in here. There we go. Can you hear cashmere? Purring my cat. That's on Mark's lap. She's laying on your arm. Okay, so I'm going to move, yeah, I'm going to move the head up. I'm going to cover this part with more paint here. Get that light, light yellow green. I 
And I'm using that 8 filbert. I don't know if I mentioned that when I started with it. All right, so. Let's get a little bit of black and ultramarine blue, a little bit of brown, burnt umber. this gray that's back here. I'm going to paint over this beak because I don't want to have to fit it in right there just so I want to put it where I want to put it. Okay. And this will give me a little color to kind of play with over the top of some of these feathers here, so I'm going to kind of soften up the edges with this background color here. And if you've got a color that doesn't fit, like, you know, the, this is a new color, it's not going to be exactly like this color over here. So the way to blend it in is just to kind of brush it out away from the area a little bit and blend it into the existing area and then like skip around a little bit so that it gets put in multiple places and I can see some areas over here that didn't quite get covered by paint and so I'll just use this color over here in these areas and it'll just look like we kind of meant to meant to do it it's part of it and using this filbert brush makes it nice because it's rounded, so it kind of creates soft shapes. It's easy to kind of blend in new areas of color. It's not as harsh. I'm going to get a little bit of white, maybe a little bit more brown. on there too so that worked go back to a little bit of burnt umber and purple I'm going to bring this line up a little bit right here little lines through here so I'm just going to kind of use the tip of it and kind of curve out some darker lines in there this time this is indigo blue so I'm seeing 
So the, the beak is almost, it's kind of right in here. It's coming all the way out to here. So I'm just not making it big enough first. So it's got a curve and then it's got another little curve in. really almost halfway so just going a little conservative with it at first there just right about there where that kind of meets this that's actually too far over I need to bring it in even more it's too far over this is not very long right here Begins there. Guess that white line. Yeah, I have I have the eye in just about the right spot. I just think I need to bring that neck in a little bit. Right there. Okay. just a little bit. Go ahead and kind of draw on these feathers too. So, give me the overall color or the overall shape there. circle that's like flat on top and then inside that is another kind of circle with a wedge cut in it right there All right and then set right here so right here so do your big outer first and then my little wedge shape inside my egg shape then a little oval and then another little oval with a little notch in it and that all comes 
comes down to its center thing. And let's go ahead and do another one right here. I pretty much captured it in the in the photo. Fortunately, I was able to have three pretty good. They cooperated. My models cooperated mm -hmm. with me. <laughs> so there we go. So just kind of getting a feel for the feathers without having to paint them all. Win-win. <laughs> all right. Filbert here in the 6100 series. And get my thalo blue and ultramarine blue. I'm going to kind of do the outer outer neck. right where these two meet just a slight little rounded spot right there okay get maybe a little bit of purple for around the back side of the eye here it's pretty dark and back feathers and then there's this little nook that happens with the neck where it comes across and it sticks out just a little bit right there. Not super exaggerated. I don't want it too big, but more like that. And this this line is lumpy. It's got feathers. And then it starts to widen out a little bit more right here. This is turquoise that I've got on my brush right now. Pretty, pretty solid turquoise too. Let's go ahead and map out around the eye here. Pretty good. I think we've got did it better to make it a little bit bigger. I think that was the problem. It was just a little bit too small. I think we're gonna plug your microphone for a second. Okay. Some static positive. better. I think so. Okay. I don't know why it does that sometimes. Yeah. It'd be great for weeks and then all of a sudden it just... It probably, it's like your computer has to mm. reboot. <laughs> <laughs> So how are you doing? I haven't really asked you yet. Doing good. How's everybody in chat? Oh, there's nobody here. It's just me and you. Just me and yeah, me no, and you. Yeah, nobody decided to show up. Oh, that's too bad. I had 
lot of people saying they were looking forward to painting this. So. It's okay. It's just me, you, and the pets. It's fine. Huh? Just me, you, and the pets. Me and the pet. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm less nervous when I think that way, so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get as nervous as I used to. When I first started doing the live streams, it was a little, a little daunting. As long as I don't have to be on screen. <laughs> Something about that makes me nervous. But just my hands, it's okay. I still have a little buffer of comfort there <laughs> for some reason, psychologically. <laughs> All right, so we're getting there. Again, I really love this color. I'm kind of just using these, all three of these blues interchangeably, different different strengths. We'll be adding more of the lighter colors on top. I'm probably going to actually go back over this and then glaze back over with this dark blue on top, but I kind of want to do it how I normally do it and then work back into the glazing. Picking up a little bit of the green gold here. So I'm going to bring that that turquoisey color up because since I made the head higher I can I have more room for the turquoise to go down here get some white yeah so it's gonna be like in here Just kind of doing this in small sections and using my using my reference photo to kind of keep an eye on where the brush or the you know the feather the direction of the feathers so I'm getting this motion kind of in the right place for these feathers here. some yellow cadmium yellow light and that green gold or thalo green either one can use it around the neck right there kind of paint in colors over here and here too. I'm gonna make use this green gold greenish color to kind of paint in around the outside of our feathers and I'm gonna keep it real sketchy like real loose here. We'll be adding lots of other feathers here, so I don't want to go real solid with this. And this is a little bit more green that's in my than's in my photo, but I have other photos of it. If you turn it in the right light, it kind of has this green tint. So I kind of want to go ahead and go with this color, and then we'll we'll add our other colors after. Maybe get a little bit of yellow. Do 
have seen that lime, lime green yellow in there too. And this is kind of how I'm going to paint it. So I'm going to keep it real loose like this. It's going to look really nice and painterly and soft and fresh and not too hard edged. I don't really like it when the, especially painting feathers, I don't like it when I get um, too solid with them. If you like block in the color too much, it just doesn't look realistic because these feathers are individual pieces that are making this. You know, each one of these, if you separated it out, has is, is a individual feather that's going all the way through, but they're patterned, which is incredible if you think about it. The, the Their bodies can do this, make these patterns out of these feathers, these individual feathers like this. It's incredible. But each one of these are just these tiny little filament feathers, and so if I go in here with like a solid line, it's not going to look right. So if I want to make it look like feathers, I can kind of go in here like a little bit looser and kind of get the feel for that jagged um, jagged color that we're seeing in there you know the lines all these little individual lines that are making up that shape that makes sense so when are we having the uh the peacock call impression contest uh, <laughs> do you want to go first no <laughs> Oh, but then you went first anyways. Yeah, I did. Wow. Caca, caca. <laughs> what show was that from? <laughs> Hopefully somebody in the audience can tell me because we, we quote it all the time and I li like literally looked it up and I could not find it. Wasn't that the, uh, it was with, the show it was, where it, they had the failed... <laughs> Arrested Development. Yeah. I, I think it was the guy, or Will the Arnett, from that. that, but I don't think it was that show. I think it was a different show. That, but I could never find it. <laughs> he had a trained hawk, and he'd... Call it back. Call it... Caca, caca. I can't remember. I just remember it was hilarious. We can timestamp that. We'll make... <laughs> Which is not too far off from what these guys sound, honestly. They have a real, mm -hmm. very high-pitched shriek, shrieky noise. All right, I'm mixing my Indian yellow hue with my cadmium yellow light and getting some white. It's got that green gold there, too. I still had some of that green in my brush, so it made, um, made some mixture there. I'm going to use that on here and I'm going to put start putting in my individual feathers in this back area here. I actually want to turn my brush so that the light part is going down because these feathers are kind of overlapping that way and just kind of start to lay in some highlights and I'm going to probably glaze over this so I don't mind if it's not exactly the right color here. I'll, I'll probably glaze over and add some other colors. I'm just trying to get kind of the basic shapes that I'm seeing, right? And get some lighter values in there so that I can do some glazing over the top of this. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I want it to just kind of fade out into this area here. Let me get some unbleached titanium. And I think I'm gonna make some gray. <laughs> Fitz Pickle is snoring in the background. Of course, he stops as soon as I get quiet. All right, I'm gonna get some. So, I got that. It's got a little bit of that green in it, too. It's fine. I'm not worried about it. White's one of those colors that you don't want to try to mix it with it on your brush. You kind of have to clean your brush out and start with fresh white and then add your color to it. Not try to add white to your color because you'll never get it light enough. <laughs> All right, 
right? So I already kind of did the, the dark areas, so I'm just going to kind of go in between them here with this light, lighter white color here. Add, this is really kind of gray-ish. I'm going to add a little bit of unbleached titanium even. A little bit warmer, light tone. And I'm using a very light touch and just barely touching down and kind of just skimming it, lifting so that I'm getting kind of soft, wispy brush strokes here. I don't want anything too harsh. No hard lines. some glaze and just kind of very lightly skim it over here. The glaze is just going to help make it a little bit more transparent. Use it in this area over here. Alright, looks good. It's almost like turkey feathers looks like right now. Getting a little bit of the brown. I'm going to add that to it. So I still have that kind of light grayish color but it's just a little bit more brown. Not quite as light bit darker in value. I'm just going to add a few little sweeping brush strokes to this side. And then in the purple area down below here, I'm going to get some purple, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and kind of add some, just the suggestion of some lighter feathers down there. Maybe a little bit on this side too. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna get the ultramine or the the doxazine. No, the what is that? Quinacridone magenta. Thank you. Man, I'm way well into art brain right now. My boards are getting hard. Boards are hard when you're painting. It's difficult. some of that in. It's not a color that's real obvious and um, so I don't want to use a lot of it. I don't want to turn my bird pink, but I do want just a touch of this color. I think it's just going to warm up the undertones in my feathers. So just a little hint of it here and there. Just in these back feathers and then look at how pretty that is. It'll just kind of make them glow a little bit. Let's go ahead and I didn't do my side over there with the yellow. I'm going to get my yellow color that I was using over here on this side and use a little bit of it over here. Okay, and then I'm going to get this raw sienna, a little bit of yellow, Indian yellow, and add it to the Again, if you don't have raw sienna, just use your yellow oxide. Maybe add a little bit of brown to it. It doesn't have to be this exact color. I just used it because it was close. I like to use colors that are already sort of pre-mixed. I don't use a ton of pre-mixed colors, but sometimes they really speed up the process, especially when I'm painting live. So they're helpful to have. It's good to know how to mix colors, but... It's also, if you're going to use a lot of a color, there's no reason to have to mix it every time you use it, you know. It, it's just, it's nice to know how to mix it, but, you know, once you know how to mix it and you're going to need a bunch of it for a painting, why not grab the pre-mixed <laughs> version? It's just save, saving time. It just makes sense. And, you know, I mean, you don't have to run out and buy all the colors, but... I, I like to have all the colors myself, and so if I have it, why not use it? All right, um, burnt sienna here. Mixing that in with what we've got. I'm just gonna kind of add it to along the edges here. Kind of softened up the edges with a little bit of that. And I'm just gonna kind of work this edge where between the dark feathers and the lighter feathers with a little bit of this burnt sienna. Put a little bit of it over here, even though it's not super visible in my picture. But there, look 
really pretty. <coughs> Excuse me. You are excused. Thanks. So I notified it, everybody in chat uh -huh. that the show in two weeks yes. will not be happening. Yes, I'll have to reschedule it. I'll have to change the schedule. We have confirmation of a date for... Baby. Baby. So excited. Baby one. First granddaughter. Yay! <laughs> Our sons have pulled through. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I'm sitting right here. Not, no, I wouldn't change them out my ways. Mm. At the time, I might have before <laughs> I met them, but now I wouldn't change anything. <laughs> I might have cried a little bit when Spencer turned out to be a boy. <laughs> he was number three. <laughs> I was like, I just knew if God was going to give me a third, that I was going to have a girl. <laughs> it's going to be a girl. Nope. Didn't turn out that way. <laughs> That's all right. He, he turned out pretty awesome. So yes. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't take it back. But now we're going to get to enjoy some granddaughters. So I'm really excited. It's actually the best of both worlds because then we don't have to deal with the hormones, you know. <laughs> true, true. We can enjoy all the fun and not have to deal with the teenager. Teenage hormones. Yeah. Win. All right. Moving on. Sorry. Um, just mixing up some light turquoise with the turquoise and the white here going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm just going to add some light feathers over. We're going to glaze all of this. So it's going to, it's not going to look great. You know, it'll probably look worse before it looks better. I call it the ugly stage. So just kind of know as you're doing this that you may get to a point where you're like, I'm pretty sure I'm doing this wrong and that, you know, you're on the right track. <laughs> it's fine. Every painting goes through that. It's part of the process. It takes a lot of layers to get acrylics to look right, so you kind of have to deal with deal with it. Keep on going. A lot of people stop and give up, and they will throw their painting out at this stage. And I'll be like, no, <laughs> you know, you're so close. You only needed like two more layers and you would be finished, but you kind of get, they get frustrated and they don't know, you know, that it's normal. And so they kind of, I try to encourage my students to just keep on trucking through. They'll post pictures and you know, ask for help. And I'm just like, yep, you're on the right track. Just keep on going. Like, they're like, are you sure? <laughs> I'm not doing this wrong. Nope, you're not. Just keep on going. You haven't finished it yet. It's just not finished yet. <laughs> just keep on working on it until it's finished. <sighs> All right, I wanted that to be a little bit higher and a little bit more curved there. Just bringing that purple up. All right, this is turning out pretty good so far. I'm liking it. What time is it? 7 o'clock. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Making good time. So is this pre-Jurassic Park? Peacock Earth? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hey, did you see in the news that the, uh, the cheese factory blew up? What cheese factory? Yeah, there was debris everywhere. Oh, God. Seriously. Sorry, you please, bring out the, the swear words in me. Please hold for, no. for sound no. effects. I got, I got to know what I'm going to do it so I can play the drums at the right time, but... That was, that was not... Apparently, 
We did have a brie salad that was amazing today, though. Yes, it was. I'm adding light turquoise here over the color. Apple, brie, yum. Walnut, bacon. <sighs> Chicken. So Chicken. good. There was some green stuff in there somewhere. There was, but it had all the other good stuff, so oh, it didn't I really matter. put enough dressing on it, so yep. I couldn't taste it. As it should be. It's really good. <laughs> some people liked the joke so much they commented, Oh, cheeses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay, so we're going to make somebody sad because it's not the good glaze. But So what do you mean when you say glaze? I'll show you in a minute. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain it well, when, when I do it. There. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not there yet. It's not the good kind, like on donuts. So no, no. Don't get your not. hopes up. No, not that kind of glaze. All right, adding some phthalo green to white here. I'm going to add some little, whoop. That's way too thick. There. And probably a little too dark, but... Again, this is going to look kind of funky before it looks better, so... Bear with me here. I'm going to get the turquoise and kind of go over it a little bit, soften it up in places. I got it a little bit too thick there in a couple places. Patreon is yeah. a separate website that um, we post to. We post traceables for our videos here on YouTube. So all the public videos that we have on YouTube, we'll make a dr drawing. So I'll have a drawing of this that we'll post on there. And that's the $2, $2 level. It's two dollars. It's a monthly fee, but it includes like unlimited downloads, and you can cancel anytime. So it's not like you know you're locked in. You get a whole month of of subscription. And now, because of the way they just changed our billing, not all patrons, but we have um, we're part of the beta testing for their new monthly billing. So you actually pay. Um, Today and you, so the 13th, you would get it until October 13th instead of getting charged again on the first of the month like it, they used to do. So, um, new patrons, old patr older patrons won't be affected. They'll be the same as they always have been, but build on the first. But the newer patrons that sign up will actually have the date of their sign up as their date of billing. So, as long as you. If you wanted just to do one month, you could cancel the very next day, and um, it would still give you two the following, you know, 30 days or whatever to access. Right. Yep. Know, so. Which is awesome. Yeah, and then um, our five dollar level gets uh, all of that. The traceables plus they get a bonus video, monthly bonus video that's a longer three to five hour. Um, usually around three hours, three hours, but some of them are pretty long. <laughs> some of them went way long. <laughs> um, longer, I'm not sure where the one we did this last Sunday, we just finished. Oh yeah, the wind, the mill. Yeah. Um, so there's the, the bonus video for September. And then um, our $10 level gets a weekly Thursday um, lesson. So we spent Thursday drawing. This last week was our first week doing it, so we took the time to draw. I'm more in depth of drawing 
and then transferring it onto canvas and starting on our little tea and macarons, macarons. Uh -huh. So we'll be working on that for at least three weeks, maybe four weeks to get it finished. Um, and we just kind of work on one project that's called a challenge video, um, challenge image, and those are going to be more difficult, more advanced, and um, got a great, great group of ladies in there that are and me. really, and we they, they have, we have a Facebook group where they can post um, whatever they're working on for critique and that kind of thing. So it's pretty fun. And so as a disclaimer, you know, those are the current rates. So if you're watching this in, like, say, 2030. It'll probably have changed, It, it yeah. might be a little bit more. So. Yeah. On the top here, there's all these little lumpy knobs here. I'm going to, I probably don't have the right brush for this. I'm probably, yeah, I'm going to wait and not do, not do it with this brush because I want to get more details in that. But there we go. Okay, so we've got good texture going on. I'm going to go a little bit lighter in a couple areas because I want to glaze over. So I'm going to go on these areas that I want to shine our transparent color through. Or shine through our transparent colors, I should say. Let me glaze over them. And like I said, I'll explain it as we do it, but... When you're glazing, you you need um, a light color underneath for the glaze to shine through. So usually something that's mixed with white helps a little bit more of a bounce to the to the glaze when you get to that part. So I'm gonna kind of really go bright right there. good. And there is one other level on Patreon that I didn't mention that is the angel level, which I have three right now. Um, we meet one-on-one -on, -one on Skype call. And like a 30 minute Skype call where I can go over whatever they're working on give them in-depth critique um, one of the ladies that's that does it with me that's um, anonymous she doesn't want to be on the end screen there of my videos she um, sends me her pictures that she's worked on and then during the Skype call we go over them and I sketch out changes or, you know, give critique. Um, sometimes they're just like, good job, and sometimes it's, you know, like I would probably add a little white over here or whatever, you know, whatever it is. So, it's, it's pretty fun, yeah, and I do it with a, my iPad so she can see in real time me drawing over the top of her drawing. So, that's something Fancy. that we're interested in. I've got a couple of those spots left. I don't have a lot of those because they're kind of more intensive. And then we've got Andrew, who's been an angel from day one, just about. <laughs> he's amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Andrew. Shout out to Andrew. <laughs> and got a new new angel that just joined. I haven't done a Skype with her yet, but looking forward to it. So, Raman. And thank you Raman. to all the amazing patrons. Oh, yeah. Thousands, literally yes. thousands of patrons yeah. that we have are just so, so amazing. Literally changed our lives and made it so that we can start thinking about Mark full doing it full time with me. And yeah. It's just pretty, pretty cool. Bringing more, more dad jokes. Bringing the dad jokes. Oh, wait a minute. Subscribers are starting to drop off. No, no, they're like, no, no more dad jokes. They're like, sorry. Thursday's show, I heard we didn't have to have Mark there. Does exactly. It, if Once he retires, is he going to be there? Because that may be a deal breaker. <laughs> well, I mean, you did not send me the right link, so I couldn't join this past Thursday. I, don't I accidentally yeah. didn't send mm -hmm. you the link to yeah. the oh, Thursday oh, show. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's so weird. Okay, yeah. I'll, do, I'll do it after. <laughs> 
All right, I'm gonna clear off some workspace here. I've got all my paints kind of starting to dry and they're just gonna start to form a film and then I won't be able to mix over the top of them. They'll just get flaky and cause problems. So just scrape all this off of here. Look at the clean workspace. So need to have some good good color out there. Let's see, I forgot that when I put that color out, I was gonna put it on my feathers and I forgot. Okay. I need to speed this up or I'm not gonna finish in time. No what time is that? Well, Mark's bedtime, I guess. Okay, well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and I'm going to switch over to a round brush. It'll be easier to do the details in the face and the head and things. So let's get my white and a little bit of my turquoise and phthalo blue. that I'm seeing on the head. I filled in around the eye with this white here. It's kind of had a little bit of green in my brush, but that's okay. Just doing these little lumpies and they kind of overlap quite a bit over here. And then get real, real small right by the nose and the back side of the head. is pretty dark so I'm not gonna bother with that area and again this is much lighter than what we need it to be I'm gonna get a little bit of purple with my yellow blue I'm gonna go a little bit darker up above the eye here I'll widen this out just a little bit right there So let's go ahead and start glazing. I'm going to get the phthalo blue. That's the main color that I'm seeing in most of this. And I'm going to add glaze. You can add water instead if you don't have glaze. I would add glaze or some sort of medium if you have it, like matte medium even would work um, because it'll help the paint stick better if you 
add too much water to heavy body acrylics, they can underbind and you can have problems. If you add subsequent layers on them, they can kind of lift off. They won't stick to the canvas well. I get a little bit of purple and go a little bit darker, maybe a little bit less glaze right up here on the neck, underneath the chin and along here. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of very lightly go outside the lines a little bit. between my light areas here with this color, this darker purpley color, purpley blue. And I've got lots going on there. Okay, let me clean that out. Go back to my yellow blue. And I can do this as many times as I want until I get it as you know dark as I want. And I could add more light on top of this, so it's not like this is the last layer that you can do and you have to live with it. You know, if you didn't get your light colors light enough underneath this, it won't it won't pop as much as you maybe need it to. So you might have to add a little bit more of the lighter colors again and then do this again. I'm gonna go ahead and go over all of this. And if I got it, if I got it light enough, I should, only have to do this once, hopefully. I got really nice vibrancy there. I'm going to use my turquoise and glaze with it, too. So, and again, depending on how much water I use, I use more or less paint. The more you need to use a transparent color for glazing to work the best. You can use an opaque color, but it will be a little cloudy. These colors are purely transparent, so they just glaze like a dream. These thalo blue and turquoise and thalo green even. Green gold is transparent too, so it, it's going to make a really nice glaze. Ultramarine blue glazes pretty well. It's a little bit more opaque, but not quite. Doxazine purple glazes really well. Quinacridone magenta is another one that does really well glaze. So any of those colors you can use over the top of your other colors to tint them and add depth. So if somebody was to go out to buy glaze, what are they looking for? What's the actual product? This is golden gloss glazing liquid. You can get satin glazing liquid. Gloss is a little shinier. I have both. Uh, or matte medium works as well. And their matte medium also has an extender. So both of those have an extender in them that will give you a little bit extra working time before they dry. Um, if you don't find one that has an extender in it, you need to be careful because um, a lot of times in gloss gl glazing mediums will dry almost immediately um, and they can be really difficult to work with so you need to find one that's got an extender in it like the golden one does and if you use the links to like Blick and stuff like that below the video yes. to purchase it it will also support the channel yes. and one more question Amazon and Blick and they will be in my list um, okay. on on the, both of those places and supply list yeah I'm adding turquoise to the doxazine purple here so I've got and when they get the bottle of glaze do they have to paint on the outside of it like you do <laughs> does it make it better more powerful <laughs> it makes it so much better. Okay. Right. I have no idea. <laughs> I told Mark the other day, I was like, my God, what is happening in my studio? Uh, my poor water jar, I just put a really pretty sticker on it and it's got paint all over it. Yeah, yeah. Do you side cam on it? You yeah, can I'll see my so poor, my poor uh, water jar gets just abused. 
<laughs> That's literally maybe a month. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can see all the paint underneath it. You know, I just I thought we'll put a really pretty, <laughs> thankful art sticker. Which, by the way, you can get at Teespring. A little shout out to Teespring <laughs> sticker. Spring. spring, yeah, not spring, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. Anyhow, it's funny. Um, all right, so I'm gonna add just a tiny. Now I am gonna use the turquoise. I'm gonna use a. a Magenta, woo, radical. Look at how dark that makes. Turquoise and magenta. Get some really nice dark color there. Now this is going on more opaquely, so I'm trying to get kind of some darker feathery details here. So I'm kind of putting it on a little bit thicker. Okay, that looks good. And then let's use this color up by the head right here. That little area right there. green and turquoise. Do this part of the neck with that. Really pretty. Use a little bit of in here. beautiful and vibrant. Okay. There's not another way to get your colors that bright that I know of with acrylics. You have to have that light color underneath. If I go in here and add white to green gold, it dulls the color. It's not going to be as vivid as the parts where I glazed with it. So, all right, looks good. I'm going to add a little bit of this green glazing in here, and I'm seeing a little bit of it peeking through in spaces in here. I'm putting it on, kind of tapping it off here. All right. And then on the face, I'm gonna get more of that phthalo blue, more of my turquoise and glaze all of these little dots. see that this color is different than the color that is glazed. It's just a little bit less vibrant. But something like these feathers, it really makes a difference. I'm going to 
glaze back in that area right there. Just a little bit. Get some green gold with this thalo blue and some white. here. I don't want the green to come down over the top of this thalo blue area here. They get kind of a medium thalo blue. Okay. Back to this round brush. Let me get my white and my You zoom in on the face here and try to really get a good wipe that all off so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. is gray. I'm going to start from here and kind of come out like that. important right there. And getting the black. I'm gonna kind of make that nostril area a bit dark. And then get the white and tap in the border of the nose. mixing with my brush so it's not pure white. I'm gonna get a little bit of the burnt burnt sienna or um, raw sienna. Use that. This is the mouth here coming all the way down. And it's kind of meeting up with this light, this color right there. Did I make it big enough? I hope so. Just a little bit. That's it. Dark. Yeah, I think that looks good. Getting the white and can highlight kind of the bottom of it a little bit. And then get a little bit more on the tip. It on the inside of the nostril. I think I make I need to make it a little bit bigger maybe. I'm not sure. I'm gonna keep going here because I'm getting stuck on details here. Alright, so this white here, I've got a little bit of white and a little bit of unbleached titanium. Gonna tap in along here, create that light highlight along the top of the eye, along underneath the eye, Get 
a little bit of burnt umber, mix that with this light gray color, and just add that in. Looks good. I'm gonna get my gray and my white and separate out this part of the peak. And then let's get black and just add a line. Kind of where the mouth is. Comes down. They frown. I don't know what they're mad about, but they're around. They frown. <laughs> okay, let's use this light gray around the eye. Just tap it in around the eye. Get the black. Burnt umber and burnt sienna for the eye color. Well, zombie eyes had a good run there for a little while. Yeah, they did. All good things must come to an end. <laughs> no more zombie eye. In black. I'm going to go along the top with black. Not a ton of detail in the eye here. There's maybe tiny bits of kind of yellow gold so I can get a little bit of that and maybe dab a little. Doesn't want to stick right now. So too wet. There we go. Can dab a little bit of that in. I'll have to let that dry. Before we can do much else with it. So let's go ahead and put in our feathery deals back here. Not sure what they're called. Probably not feathery deals, but. Oh, wow. I was sure that's what they were called. <laughs> Let me just add a little bit of blue to this black and white gray. I want it fairly dark. And they're coming out from right about here, kind of top of the crown from here to here or so. I'm just going to go ahead and do your lines quickly. to keep them fairly thin. If you are having trouble keeping your lines thin, what you can do is add water to your paint color. The thinner the thinner the paint, the better, the smoother lines you'll get. and just kind of add, scuff it up. I find with realistic detail, like the more messy you are, the better sometimes. It's, it's those like really smooth transitions and really like um, clean lines that sometimes take, take away from the realism. 
So if I come back in here and kind of smudge things out and mess them up a little bit, it tends to look better to me, at least, you know, that's just how I like to do it. So it's a look, look I'm going for, but there's all kinds of different ways of methods of doing it yeah, to a little bit of highlight right on the top of the beak. Just kind of brushing it out in a couple places. So Shit, it's kind of messy. So you were close. What? On on their name. What name? For those feathery bits. What is it? Crest. Nice. And help the world if we ever discover a new thump species and we get to name it and describe it. Yes. They'll be like, so kindergartner discovered it? <laughs> Armholes? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? What does she mean? All right. Kitty. My white and I've added glaze to it. If you have turn, if you have um, zinc white, you could use that instead. Leave just a tiny bit of that black showing here. I'm gonna add my whites to white highlights in the eye, and then I'm gonna grab my brighter white. So this was the glaze. I had a little bit of blue in there, maybe and just some other colors. And then I'm going to go back in and add just a bright pop of white in a couple places. There we go. There's our peacock eye. I, I feel like the head, I don't know, there's something about the head that's bugging me, but I'm not really sure what it is. So I'm going to keep moving, but hopefully it'll come to me before the end of the show. <laughs> I'm going to get a little bit of the turquoise, a little bit of the ultramarine blue, burnt umber. I'm not burnt umber, ultramarine blue and phthalo blue. I'm going to go um, and darken up in front of these glazed bits that are dabbed on. It'll kind of settle them in. And if you're not getting that kind of um, and I'm kind of glazing back over these too. If you're not getting the feathery look with the brush that you're using, um, you can use a brush that's got some texture. So like a rake brush or even the, that's why I was grabbed these brushes. These do great for feather details, but my brush was able to, by kind of raking it really quickly, I was able to get kind of a feather like motion on my brush. So I kind of got sort of feathery feathery looking little bits. I'm going to kind of using this medium yellow blue to kind of fill in around. It's starting to take shape. It's looking at least. Let's go ahead and add our little feathery crown here. I'm gonna get the purple to start with, maybe a little turquoise with the purple. And just set this round brush down and flick it out. Just find each one of these. Oh, something like that. And then I'm going to get my turquoise. White. 
and maybe a little bit of thalo blue. little flicks of that color on there. A little bit trickier because I want it to merge with the purple a little bit. I don't want it to show so I'm using smaller brush strokes for this. feathers. We got 15 minutes. <laughs> we can do it. All right, so we've got the green. The next area is This is the color that I was having trouble figuring out. I think I'm going to add a little bit of magenta to it and burnt sienna and then the raw sienna. So it's just kind of like slightly reddish, but still kind of a brown. Maybe a tiny touch of the burnt umber too. Okay. it to sort of do some thinner lines through. And I'm going to go ahead and just do the the feathers so at the same time so they all kind of match otherwise I'll get kind of lost in the details in one and we'll get them all done and this is probably close to the color that I'm going to want to use to do the outlying feathers too Let's get a little bit of raw umber, or raw sienna, I mean. Maybe a little bit of yellow oxide. And do some highlights. Trying to make these look feathery-like. Just this could be a lesson, really. These are pretty complicated little flower or feathers to do. A lot of parts to them. I have a peacock feather Zentangle. If anybody likes Zentangles, those were a thing, you know, really popular for a while there. I have a video on one that I did for a kids, kids series that I did one summer. Spencer was my co-host my son Spencer is in college he's he's pretty fun painted peacock feathers I had done them with my kids class years ago before I was doing YouTube 
before YouTube took over my life <laughs> and career. <laughs> Little did I know when I posted <laughs> my first video what would happen. <laughs> going off camera there. So I added some thalo green to this color. This and I'm going to add it around the edge of the border between the green and the brown. it to do the stems too of the of the feathers and I'm gonna kind of use it around the outside here too to kind of merge the these are actually making pretty thin lines I might just be able to use this brush for all these little wispies and I think I will if it works yeah this is working nicely around and then create a little wispy head right here they kind of come up into a little point right here I need to make sure that I'm attaching them all to the stem though. Looking good. I like it. I like it. It's kind of wispy. It's, it's working. And a little bit of burnt sienna in this color here and I'm going to kind of do some overlapping feathers. see how they come off. They're not all going in the same direction. They're crisscrossing and doing, you know, weird stuff. So don't get too symmetrical with them or, you know, too tight. Like, don't leave spaces between them is what I'm saying. You know, make sure when you're doing this. This is burnt sienna and thalo green. No. Um, Real quick on the thalo green, is it the yellow shade? Yes, or the green yellow shade? green, yellow shade. Okay. Thank you. You could use blue shade too, but this is, you know, this is the one I'm using. So it doesn't really matter one way or the other? It doesn't. It's just, you just want a kind of a neutral brownish green color. Okay. So you might just add a little bit more burnt sienna to it if you don't have the thalo blue green shade. Or you could um, even... add yellow, you know, yellow oxide or something, which I'll probably add some of these with a little bit of yellow in them just to have some that are a little bit different. So this one is this one now. I'm going to that are on top, like this one's got a lot of like light green highlights in my picture, and then this one has more of the brownish tones to it. And I'm going to kind of curve some down to kind of create movement. I like it. 
them thin and wispy though. These aren't really thick. Okay. I like it. Yeah, I'm not trying to make it seem like this. these feathers are coming from this bird, too. That's another important point, you know. I'm not trying to give that illusion at all because they're not, they're not going to make sense if you try to do that. We're just kind of making a little... Interesting painting. Doesn't have to make sense. It's art. You said it, not me. <laughs> Using a light blue for the this part of the inside here. I'll darken it up later, but I'm gonna keep it pretty light, small. Is that a bird making that noise? Do you hear that chirping noise? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a cricket or something. Oh, cricket. Yeah, that makes sense. It's driving me crazy. Shut up. He's happy about something. Oh my god. Stop, please. For the love of all that's holy, stop. <laughs> Do you want me to go beat him up? Yes, please. Tell him to be quiet. I can't concentrate. Just won't stop. He's like right outside the studio. All right, so Thala Blue, I added some, I think this is green gold with Thala Blue and white. there. Now if you have trouble with, you know, if you don't have a brush that's capable of creating small lines, you can use a liner brush for this. But I'm going back over my lines. And if you if you can't get them right on top of the lines, that's okay. You can, you know, they can be its own thing. It doesn't have to be highlighting what's already there. the dog too. Mark's outside. Quit, Spence Fitzy. Be quiet. No. Be quiet. Shh. I'm sorry, guys. Be quiet. I heard it. Be quiet. No. Sorry, that was probably really loud. Be quiet. At least the cricket's gone. <laughs> quiet. It's okay. You it's fixed okay. one problem and created another one. <laughs> you should have taken, taken the dog out with you. Just that it was Oops. real loud and... 
feel sorry for people with headphones because he was barking loud. Yeah. <laughs> Blew out the speakers. All right, he's in yellow here with the green. What do we have, baby? See, no crickets. It worked. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'm going to wipe off all my chalk marks here because it's just kind of getting in the way. For me to be able to see what I'm doing here. All right. We are almost done. Got your baby. Mm -hmm. Hi, puppers. Are you scared? You had to go get your baby. You got to protect baby. <laughs> it's his... Don't want him out there alone by himself. Right, exactly. Baby was probably scared when he heard that noise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, using more of this. Oxide, raw sienna, burnt sienna mixture here. Kind of didn't make my oval part look big enough. Okay. All right. I'm going to get some more of the burnt sienna. Yeah, that we got that baby toy when we got him. Right. Because it comes with a battery-operated heart beat thing that vibrates and pulses, so it makes them supposed to. Sounds like in theory heartbeat. Right. You know. Comfort. Right. When they lay with their other, you know, siblings and then being separated, they're not so traumatized. Well, right, it's supposed to be like separation anxiety toy, you know, for baby puppies that are leaving their litter mates for the first time. Right, and we didn't really use it, and then we put it in once, and it worked opposite. Oh, my gosh. He was traumatized by <laughs> Oh, my gosh, he scared him so bad. <laughs> what the heck? He wouldn't go near it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he freaked out. What? I thought I heard that cricket a little bit again. Mm-mm. Okay, I'm getting there. It's still looking a little too wispy. It's looking like there's not enough value ch change, so I'll definitely have to work on the values a little bit here to get them quite where I need them to be. I'm going to get ultramarine blue and phthalo blue, or sorry, the ultramarine blue and doxazine purple for this inner circle. It is restarting. It's farther away though. Mm -hmm. Not the grass, we're not right up close to the house. Sorry, we're talking about the cricket. <laughs> You're like, what? What grass? What are you talking about? There's no grass. All right. Mm, ultramarine blue here. I'm putting this on a little bit more smoothly. 
and some of the other places. It's pretty defined. Pretty clean looking shape. There's not a lot of jagged edges there on the feather. Which is pretty amazing. bit more blue down toward the bottom. Okay, and then I'm gonna get some white. Mix that with my ultramarine or yeah, ultramarine blue. some glaze to kind of just which brush is that smush it around this is the two filbert in the Dakota if you don't have it you, the Aspen would probably be similar but the Aspen wouldn't get as thin of lines for this part so you probably have to use the, the uh, liner brush for your lines instead of this Just going around, adding the darker color around the outside and then kind of pulling it in toward the middle a little bit. I'm always watching where my lines are so that I'm always kind of trying to line up my brush strokes with where these feathers would be facing. So I'm not going to do any lines across this way is what I'm saying. I'm going to kind of always be kind of going vertical with these brush strokes. done this once but it wasn't quite bright enough close. 
we're just a few more colors away, I think. I'm sorry, I should have written it down. You said that's the two brush? Two filbert. Two filbert. Thank you. And if, if you can't control um, your brush, if you're not getting thin enough lines, you can use a liner brush here. So I had originally intended to, but I didn't realize I could get such thin lines out of this. So this is working really nicely. So I'm just gonna stick with it. Always just stick with the brush if it's working. Don't, you know, this brush holds a lot more paint than a liner brush does. So I'm able to do a lot faster, a lot more lines than I would with my liner brush. Because it holds twice as much paint, probably four times more paint because it's that much thicker. All right, getting burnt umber and green here, and I'm going to tap in my center line on my feathers here. I kind of do go up into, into the colors just a little bit. careful with this color because it's real dark but I need this to, to have good value shifts everything's too light right now so I need to have some really dark bits in here that'll help anchor everything just a few hope and got the eye around all right, I'm pretty close. I don't love what's happening in my feathers yet, so I still feel like they need a little bit of work, but we're getting close. Let me get some ultramarine blue. Actually, let me get some magenta. I think the magenta will look nice there. I'm gonna get some magenta and add that in here. the colors in all of these feathers that are hanging out the sides here. What you doing? Checking out the brand of your green gold. Oh, it's golden. Inconspicuously so you don't have to be bothered by it. Right. shade
this thalo green with a little bit of this. Get a little bit of that darker color with the magenta that I just did. I just want a little bit darker thalo green. I need a color that will here, we'll use a little bit of burnt sienna that'll make it more opaque. But I want it more of just a green. It's just going to be a matter of stopping when you like it. So I'm still not quite there myself, but if you get to this point and you're like, I like it, stop, you know. Yours are going to look different than mine because you're doing different brush strokes and using different color mixtures. So it's all just whatever looks good to you. Sorry, Ross Anna, Burnt Santa. And unbleached titanium, maybe a little bit of yellow, Indian yellow hue. I want it kind of yellowish. Getting that iridescent look is kind of difficult, so I'm trying to kind of replicate that iridescent look where it's catching you know different colors on the feathers in different places this is better this is helping a lot Did you open the curtain? Mm -hmm. Huh? Nope. He's been barking a lot lately. It's driving me crazy. I need to look up some YouTube videos on how to stop your dog from barking because we tried to like praise him when he wasn't barking, but he doesn't get that it's because he's not barking. He hasn't figured that out yet. I don't think he's that smart. Projects. Well, if it was just the peacock, it would have been done in time. It's the feather that's throwing it long. And, of course, I had to do three feathers instead of just one, like I originally thought. It's like the mushrooms last week. are like, why, why do three mushrooms when you can do six or 12 or however many we ended up with? Eight, maybe? Ten? Who knows? It was a lot. But I loved that. I love that painting. That was fun. All right, last little bit here. I'm gonna use the phthalo blue, phthalo green, a little bit of the green gold. Maybe a little, a little tiny bit of white. 
And this color is, is, is so, it's kind of like this, this turquoisey color here. I think I'm going to use the turquoise with white. If I can get any white that's not... Just very lightly dry brushing over here to just creating little streaks through those feathers. And get some of that yellow blue color to go a little bit. Go again over the dark area around the edge if you need it. Kind of lost mine a little bit. happy with the feathers but I'm not really sure what to do to them right now without Amazing, it's just so many different colors pop peeping out here and there. All right, and then let's use that to highlight a few feathers yet again. He's an ultramarine blue here and just kind of glazing over.
Josh is not talking to me now. He's just... I'm looking to see if I see anything. Okay. I mean, other than the lines from the photo in there. What are you talking about? In the reference picture. Just being silly. Mm-hmm. I'm not seeing anything that's obvious. Okay. So. just that there's these little teeny tiny dark lines running through everything you know that you kind of have to have to make it look real and you kind of don't want to do it because it kind of messes up the perfection of the of the look of it but it makes it more realistic looking so if I kind of do like that and go through it now with some darker and go through all the layers with it. Some burnt umber here. Kind of looks like those folds that are happening through. A little too thick there. Okay, somebody wants to know that on the the light, uh, said, did she make the light blue with turquoise and white for the feathers? It's this light blue is is thalo blue and white, and then I added turquoise around the outside, and then like a little green gold in there too. So okay. it's got a lot of different colors in there, not just the one. Kind of. Okay. All right. Even can me meal at my paints are all getting really super sticky so it's making it difficult to get the thin lines that I want here. more lines through it than I needed to but get the idea it's going to be a matter of doing and this these may need you know like three or four more layers to get them because there's so many feathers and so many tiny tiny lines in here so I'm just going to keep kind of messing with it but you can start kind of shutting us down if you want I'll sign it here in a minute start shutting us down yeah So we'll just do the cowbell. That's fine.
maybe, if I learn how to do it. Super chat. <laughs> it's all recorded now, so I don't have to find the bell every time. <laughs> Alrighty, our super chatters tonight. We had a few of them. So we'll start off with... I think we are... All right, we have one from Marlena. No special message, but thank you, Marlena, for the Ooh. donation. Marlena. Thank you, Marlena. Yes. Yeah, and I deleted the first one I clicked on by accident. So the first one was from Cindy, and she oh, says, you, Cindy. Very pretty peacock. Oh. I enjoyed this tutorial and chat. Yay. So thank you very much, Cindy. Using a little bit of burnt sienna here. And then we had from one from Leanne, and Leanne says, "Love the peacock and painting and Mark's jokes." Oh well. So see, somebody's got taste. Don't, don't encourage him, Leanne. <laughs> she knows what's good. <laughs> And then we had one from Karen. Thank you so much from you. Thank you, Angela, for incredible tutorials. And Mark for the laughs and camera work. Oh, thank you, See? Karen. See? Sweet. It's not an oddball thing. No. <laughs> and then we had one I general like question. <laughs> Getting some more of this turquoisey blue over here. Which is either I deleted it or it fell off, so I apologize. So the question is... Because uh, they were asking if you use heavy body paints or yes. fluid paints. And I said, well, you use mostly the heavy bodies. Right. And they wanted to know, are the heavy bodies more or workable longer than fluid? Um, I, they're more, they're workable longer than your general craft acrylic, yes. So they, I can blend with them a little bit longer. As far as the golden fluids, I'm not really sure. I'd have to, I'd have to test it. You do. I use different techniques for for different things. So like dry brushing and things like what I'm doing tonight, where I'm you know wanting the texture to show in the brush strokes. It's really difficult to get that look with a fluid paint. So you kind of have to have like your paint a little bit thick to get that. It, it you can still do it. It's just more difficult. So um, now they're starting to shine, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Just needed a couple more layers. I'm telling you guys, when you get frustrated and you don't think it's looking good, just keep on working at it. Sometimes it just takes a couple more layers. It's starting to get there now. I'm liking it a lot better than I did 10 minutes ago. <laughs> you know? Just and it's keep just amazing. Yeah, just keeping on adding more layers. The, it needed the dark. The things that I look at when I'm, like, frustrated and I don't know what to do, the first thing I look at is my values because a lot of times it's just because I'm not getting enough depth to my paint colors so you know that was the problem at first when we first started because we weren't getting a lot of we had a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, lighter colors kind of dominating so go back through here and add a little heavier line down the middle there um so that's the first thing I look at, and then I'll look at my drawing, make sure my drawing's not off, because sometimes that's the problem. You know, if your drawing's not quite right, um, it'll look not right. Um, then you can look at um, colors. You know, maybe you've got a... change your colors a little bit, need to do a little glazing or something like that, 
I think we're done. What do you think? I think I'm yeah. pretty happy with those feathers now. We got another. They're not perfect. I don't know. I, I need to. Okay, you got another question. Another question I'm still fiddle in. with them while yeah. you're while you're while I'm answering. But. So Donna would like to know how can I get their blue brighter, other than adding white. Um, do do the glazing like I showed you earlier in the video on the feathers here. So do your light color underneath and then glaze on top, and then your blue will be brighter. Yeah, that's that's an easy easy. And a lot of people don't don't realize that 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 is what will take your your paintings to the next level. You know, that's that's the thing that that artists are doing that are you know selling their works for thousands of dollars. That you don't realize until you you know start doing it yourself. When I start when I started realizing how much it affected my artwork, it changed the game. Like for me, my artwork went to a whole new place when I started glazing. It just really, really opens up a much much more um, depth in your work and more vibrant colors and everything, you know, than just adding white to your colors to make them lighter. Um, glazing is where it's at. I'm going to go a little darker right here with the burnt sienna. Speaking of glazing, I'm just glazing over a little bit darker right there. I like it. I I, th I think I could probably spend another hour on those feathers and still not have them quite where I want them to be. But, um, but I think that they're pretty good for, you know, for a two and a half hour painting. I'm going to sign it. But that's where you encourage others, you know, and you've done it in other videos where, you know, this is a unique situation. You're painting live. You're doing right. it as a tutorial. So we can't go on 8, 10, 12 hours. Right. But, this is a starting place. Right. But when somebody's at home doing it, they, they can do that. They can stop. They can look at it, walk away, come back another day, you know, and then, you know, continue working on it and, and then it'll click. Right. Yep. Yep, for sure. I'm going to splatter a little bit. I feel like it needs some splatters. No way. What? No way. Really? Yeah, I think I think it'll benefit, benefit from some splattering. It'll just soften everything up a little bit, especially around the feathers. It it takes the pressure off of a painting. It's it's weird, but it kind of everything kind of gets a little bit more soft and dreamy when you glaze or when you splatter I mean yeah, I'm going to just use my blues I think I want kind of a darkish color so I'm just going to mix up what blues I've got left over here add lots of water to it add a little bit of glaze if I have any left there I'm using my fan brush I should be able to just tap and get the splatters to come off. So if I if I don't have enough water on my brush, I need to add more. There we go. And I want fairly large splatters, so I'm gonna go for it. Really. And if you don't like where your splatters are at, I tend to do a lot and then I'll and then I'll dab because I got like a large one right there I don't like so I'm just going to dab that off I try to keep it away from the face a lot of times I don't really like to do the face I didn't do much on my bird I didn't really want a whole lot on the bird itself but I didn't want right there yeah um, yeah I mean I don't mean I don't mind a few I want a few on there because I don't want it to look like it's not part of it you know kind of like but I can kind of dab off a little of the extra excess to soften it I'll just dab it off. All right. 
That's it. Yeah. So. Thank you to all those super chatters yes. and the Patreon supporters. Yes. And those who buy from our affiliate links. That all supports the channel. All those who watch our videos, share mm -hmm. them, tell their friends about them. Ooh, look what I just did. I made a mess. There's not coming off. There we go. Ooh, that was scary. Yes, yep. That they come to you for learning, schooling, mm. learning how to paint, have some fun along the way. Hopefully, hopefully take out the some of the frustration. It's difficult learning any new skill. And I think if you go into painting knowing that and giving yourself permission to be bad at it for a little while until you get good at it, you know, just know that it's going to be a little bit frustrating and we're trying to take the, kind of show you sort of some shortcuts and techniques and things to help make it a little bit easier to fulfill your mm -hmm. vision of what you want to paint. Gain but, some confidence. Yeah, gain some confidence and learn some skills so that you can kind of take them and do it, run with it, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We've got lots of people have, you know, started out with our lip videos and are now, you know, doing it full time on their own, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So I love to, love to see that. All right. I'm going to right. call that good pretty fun i liked it hope you guys liked it too give it a thumbs up like subscribe if you haven't already didn't mention that <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys next time we'll uh be back next week hopefully and then the week after that we're gonna be becoming grandparents for the second time yes so. <laughs> <laughs> we will not be here that following tuesday <laughs> all right thanks guys so much we'll see you later <laughs> bye